lot of times it's fit, fit into the spectrum, you know, someone's doing something in your high registry, you think, oh, well, it's kind of right with the low, or like, your chordal things, I want to play a single note. Right, Chuck started playing a bunch of stuff, you just went off the town and started playing bass licks. Yeah. I had that luxury because of that. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was great. It's, it's a lot of stuff like that. You look, sometimes with a lot of guitar players, you look for like a different frequency, different range, like Buzz was saying. Just contrast mix uh, kind of fills out the sound and you don't compete. Hopefully you don't step on each other's toes too much. Or in a really nice situation, you two people will hit on an melody line and play it together. Like right. Yeah. Yeah. Allman Brothers are really great at that. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and that's that, that and that makes a very good point. You know, so rather than rather than contrast or avoiding one another, it's just that, like sort of diving in and and you know trying to get some and and be a part of that that same thing, and doing something together. And, you know, maybe even maybe even playing something not even in harmony but in unison together, really right. kind of you know driving a point home, especially you know at the at the peak of a solo when somebody's taking it to the hoop. Chuck and I end up doing that a lot of times. Somebody else, you know, one of us is going wheelie wheelie, and rather than just playing power chords underneath it, you know, the other guy will jump in and do wheelie wheelie right next to him, and sometimes in harmony, sometimes in unison, and it's, you know, it's the thing that we love about playing guitar. Or one, of, you know, six thousand things we love about it. So it, it it can go in so many different directions. But the key component to all of these things, the one thing that sort of remains constant, is that you kind of have to be listening. Yeah. You know, there's, there's nothing more frustrating than to be in a, a band situation or, you know, in a situation where you're playing with musicians and somebody's just pounding away on their instrument and completely indifferent to what everybody else around them is doing. Um, because you're here to, to make music collectively. Supposedly, you know. That's very interesting. Hey, man. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of what they're also saying, you know, I mean, it applies absolutely to playing with any other instrument as well. You know, I mean, if you're playing with a, a keyboard player, you know, you're often in the same range. And so finding where you fit, you know, with someone who's sharing the same space is an important thing to uh, experiment with. And, uh, and it takes a lot of listening and, and all the things that they're suggesting here about, you know, if someone's playing a big thing, maybe you play a small thing. If someone's playing high, maybe you play low. These are all, you know, important techniques to use, and it goes back to what Al just said, you know, but it's just all about listening to the bottom line. I think an easy way to think about it is, like, it kind of breaks down into, like, range, which is, like, the melodic range, where pitches are, what's going on, um, your dynamics, which is very loud versus soft, where you fit in that perspective, and also, Thank <laughs> you. 
playing of it is the rehearsing. I mean, you can sit at home and work up your chops and get it so you can, you can hit every note cleanly and all that stuff. But the thing about playing with people, you can't practice that by yourself. So it's, the practice is the doing of it. And there's a kind of a zen to that. That's, that's, that's really true. How much does a crowd That's why we do this, you know, the, that live music experience, you know, the fact that the audience is there cheering you on as, as the band is performing something. You do something well and the audience encourages you and there's, there's a uh, the secular thing that starts to happen because then the, the, the band will respond to that and in turn do something to, you know, get more of that, get more of that from the audience because it feels really good. He's talking yeah. about cheap theatrics. Like <laughs> <laughs> right. 22 years. <laughs> 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 Works like a charm. <laughs> but I, and I started practicing that when I was about 10 years old. And, uh, before the guitar, you know? And it was all, all from the first couple of Kiss albums. And that, yeah. that I could jump between the twin beds. I mean, I got this whole thing now. I'm a master of tennis racket. That's the first one. That's the first one. Yeah. So, you know, and a lot, you know, but it, 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 it goes both ways. You know, we could all do this as guitar players in a room. Some rehearsal sessions and some jams are awesome just because you're feeding off one another as musicians. And that's enough because you're getting enough feedback from each other. But to have it from a crowd and then have it multiplied. I don't know if anybody saw Gogo Bordello last night. Yeah. Yeah. That thing that they had going on is just awesome. I mean, it gave me chills to watch it because I love that kind of energy. And that energy is, is exactly what you're talking about. And it was from everybody in the States, so too, that you guys do it from every aspect of Well, it depends. I mean, I spent a lot of time just watching and listening to what was happening up on the stage. And sometimes you have to sort of be into it and happening before you can venture your consciousness out there. Once everything here has happened to everybody's satisfaction, then you can pay more attention to what you're getting from out there. Now, I, as a solo performer, don't have to worry about that. So I spend a lot more time trying to connect with people in the audience because uh, it's just me and them. But when you're in a band, you got to get everybody there in sync before you can pay attention to what's coming in. What's up? Uh, this question is for Chuck now. You guys have been playing guitar together for, you said, 22, 23 years. And uh, he was talking about how you should start to step, sometimes step on each other's toes. Does that still happen to you guys? If it does, you have some sort of way to tell on each other. Because I know you could say you're both primarily lead guitar players in Mo, I would say. I mean, you, you both take a lot of solos, so do you ever step on each other? And anybody else who's ever played with uh, you know, another guitar player in that sense? It happens every once in a while, but it's really, it's, if you listen and you hear what's going on, then you kind of you find your place, and and you, you you have to figure out your role on the fly. If it's supportive, if you're if you're leading the charge, um, it's yeah. You basically have to make a, a decision, and it's not even sometimes it's not even a conscious decision. It just kind of sometimes the music actually everybody kind of is going in the same direction at the same time. And it's not a conscious decision of, I'm going to do this, I'm going to execute it. It's more of just like the feeling of what's going on and, and making it uh, a happy event. <laughs> so it requires a certain amount of generosity. You've got well, to not yeah. be a dick about it. I've been in bands with guys that just always want to be the one. I think I it, That's the thing, yeah. It gets a little... You know, and, and you do have to, you do have to do that. You have to know when it's time to to step up or step back. You know, play a support role, etc. No, that, that's a that's a great point. But then again, that that's that's what it means to be part of that team. You know, that that, that is a band. Um, it's a team sport. It you sure is. Realize that you you really by on your own, you don't matter. It's the the, the whole thing matters more. There's so. no I in M O E period. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a lot of it also has to do with, you know, 
if you're the improviser and someone does something that could be stepping on your toes, is are you open-minded enough to roll with it? Yeah, that's not stepping on your toes anymore. And then, you know, sometimes you can take this thing that maybe was something that was against the, your, the grain of how you thought it should go, and can you make something? And that's that's really important. A lot of it comes down to perspective, especially when you're into in an open jam. And I think that we're playing something that's going to get loud and heavy, and some somebody else may not, you know. And you're driving this thing home, and at the end of the night, it's like, why weren't you supporting me? And the other guy might say, or Chuck might say, well, why were you why were you overplaying in this section? It's like, no, I wasn't. I was trying to get. You know, it's like, no, you were. You were overplaying, but you were all bringing it down. It's like, I know, but I was bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a moment. Well, eye contact can be really helpful. Well, it can be, but you know, we, we, we kind of believe in that, that ESP, that, that band mind thing. We don't. There is no eye and right? There is. We don't do a lot of a lot of hand signals and eye contact. We don't do a lot of that. We just want to be able. To, we want to be able to pull it off. You know, through our ears. Uh, and hands, um, and so sometimes it comes down to mis miscommunication. But when you know you're firing on all cylinders and it works, and the crowd knows it, and you know it, like those those are the times that makes it all worthwhile. There's a thing you learn in improvisational comedy. I learned this from comedians years ago. It's called yes and. When you're doing improv, you what you do is you build on what each person is doing. If somebody says. You know, oh look, there's somebody at the window. You don't pretend to pick up a gun and shoot that person dead. It just ends the scene, right? You do something that builds on what they're already doing. So I think of yes and as a sort of philosophical cornerstone of the gym. <laughs> yes and. Yeah, you like, oh, I like your idea, and here's something back. You right. know, it's not like, oh, he's playing on his cell phone. Right, right, right. Can we get a quick charge on the pedals?